Why, why, why do I keep doing this to myself? Why do we keep doing this to ourselves? You hate it. I hate it, man. <laughs> I really, I really, really hate it, man. They embarrass us in front of the friends. I, it, it takes emotional toll on you, man. And, and, and I hate that I'm so invested, but I am. Microphone check one, two is popping. What up, though? It's Aaron Duncan here with the Necessary Blondness Sports Talk, bringing you another episode of the Panther Banter Podcast. I got, I got a lot to get off my chest, man. I'm just back from outer space. Went to Chicago, Soldier Field, to watch the Panthers play on Thursday night football on Amazon Prime, primetime game. First time being in Chicago, first time going to Soldier Field. Uh, it was an interesting experience. I had a good time. Um, despite the results, but Chicago is a, a, a different city, but I got a couple things to get into. You guys know what I do. A couple different segments here. Uh, first one is going to be tell them why you mad. Um, and I'm gonna tell you why I'm not mad. And then we're going to get into the main meat and potatoes of this episode. I got a lot of things to talk about. We're talking about, uh, uh the weather, me traveling. I'm giving a recap with a little bit of vlog Insta insight there. Some video there, just my experience going on there, uh, at the stadium, Obviously, the food, the food was, I'm going to tell you about the food there as well. A lot of things to talk about and more. Let's go ahead and get into it, man. So let me start off telling you why I'm mad. Why, Aaron, why you mad? Tell them why you mad. Uh, let's talk about the Chicago airport. Now, traveling since the pandemic has been hectic anywhere you go. So I, I want to give a level of grace to Chicago. Chicago, I went to uh, O'Hare. I guess they have two airports. I don't even know the name of the other one. Uh, O'Hare is the one I went to, uh, travel from Atlanta. Um, I did not take the best airline, so I'm not even talking about the airline from that. I'm talking about, um, the airport. So traveling from Atlanta, obviously one of the busiest airport in the world. Most of the time, definitely the United States. Uh, I'm, I'm used to, I'm used to chaos, but Chicago's a little bit different just because each terminal Terminals kind of like where I guess the arrival landing for whatever each, it felt like each terminal, like was only like each airline had their own terminal, which is kind of weird to me. Obviously there was a couple overlap, there was an overlap, but it seemed like the major airlines had their own terminal. Um, and I was meeting up with my guys from, uh, FBFO for Panther fans, only, uh, JJ and Terrence and JJ got in around the same time I did. Obviously he flew on another airline. Um, I went to baggage claim. It was easy to get my bag. Trying to find him was a mess. There was construction, obviously, like every other airport in the world. I'm not understanding why every airport in the country um, is doing construction. I went to Denver a couple weeks ago for work. They've been doing construction for the past three years. Here's what I found. They've been doing construction for the past three years. I'm not sure why. I, I, I'm not sure why. I have not seen construction projects that continue to go on that long since riding up 85 going to a Panthers game. You know what I'm saying? You know how 85 is just never, never complete. They're always doing something to I-85, north or south. And but especially coming between Georgia and South Carolina, North Carolina, they're always doing something. And I just it just pissed me off because I really couldn't figure out where I was. I was trying to tell him, shout out to JJ for finding me. I tried to tell him where I was at. I was just wrong. I, I didn't know there was a train. I didn't know that um you had to take a train to get to the Uber pickups and stuff like that. And I'm thinking I'm seeing the hotel shuttles. I'm seeing some ride share where I'm at. I'm thinking, cool, I'm in business. I'll, I'll just do whatever until he gets in. No. And I had no idea how to navigate. I mean, I don't travel alone often. So shout out to uh, my lady for keeping me straight when we do travel. Uh, but this is not my first time traveling alone. It's not. I've traveled alone several times, actually. Um, and I was still lost and confused. Um, so airport got me mad. Uh, second thing that got me mad is the Chicago weather. Now, it is, I, I, I understand global warming is real. I'm not trying to get political on this podcast, but we got to talk about this weather. I understand climate control, climate change, whatever you want to talk about is real. I fully believe that. However, it is December, the middle of December. Going to Chicago, I looked at the forecast. I'm like, okay, mid 40s, low 40s, low uh, high 30s the last day. Okay, that's 
I'm from the South. I'm born and raised in the South. I'm born and raised South Carolina. I live in Georgia currently. You guys know how we get down in the South. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just never know what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, from a day-to-day basis, the weather just changed. You don't know if you're going to get a volcano in the middle of the city or it's going to snowstorm. On a day-to-day basis, you really don't know how to pack. You can't pack winter clothes or have summer clothes because because stuff just changes so much, yo. Like, there's no such thing as summer and winter clothes anymore. There's no such thing. Like, it'll be freezing one week, and then by that Friday, you're, you're in T-shirts and shorts and a tank top. It's really, it's really ignorant how this weather acts. But Chicago is a little bit special in particular because I, I, I'm not dumb. I'm like, okay, 40 degrees in South Carolina – Georgia is not the same as 40 degrees in Chicago. It's called the Windy City. Like, I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. However, when I get up there, <laughs> and I'm in the airport, so keep in mind, I'm indoors. I, I'm rocking a hoodie, my standard hoodie, sweats. You know, everybody got their travel outfit that they wear, something that's comfortable. I, it's early in the morning, so I'm taking a red eye anyway. So I know it's going to be cool in the morning. So I got my hoodie, and I got my I got my, uh, my Sherpa, my little fake uh, sheep fur, in my backpack, I carried I carried it on with me, but I put it in my backpack. Um, and I wasn't really sure how to pack for this trip. I knew I would need layers. I'm like, I'm all about layers. And when it's windy, I'm all about putting something a hood on. I didn't want to. I didn't really have a beanie like that. I didn't really want to do that. So I said, let me just put a hood on. You know what I'm saying to fight the draft, and then just have layers to keep the body warm. You know what I'm saying. In my bag, I saw that forecast. I put I, I packed three bubble coats. I'm not gonna lie. I packed three puffer coats. I bought the Panthers puffer coat and a black and white puffer coat, and then I just had another default puffer coat just in case. I just was trying to be prepared for anything. I didn't know it was gonna happen. I've never been to Chicago. I'm going by myself. I don't know anybody from Chicago that can give me uh, any kind of insight. So I'm going in blind. The last thing I want to do is get caught with my pants down and not have enough layers. I'd rather overpack. So when I get there, I walk out of the airport. Woo! If you're not watching the video, I just slapped myself. That's how the wind hit me. The wind smacked me in the face. Very disrespectful. Very disrespectful. I felt like Chris Rock at the Oscars. I got slapped by that wind. I, it was not playing around, yo. It was not. And I just wasn't ready. I had my hoodie. I had my Sherpa. I still wasn't ready. I hop into my Uber. I'm like, woof, it's cold, man. The, the driver was like, today? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, this is a regular day. I said, a regular day for who? <laughs> I said, not, not where I'm from, buddy. Not where I'm from, homeboy. And I, I I was struggling. That day I was struggling. It did, obviously, that was early in the morning. But I was struggling. The weather is tough. But when it came to game day, it wasn't the same, man. It changed, yo. It changed. I, I, I told you I couldn't decide. So I had two outfits. And I'll put them on the screen right now. I was trying to debate between. I had the bubble coat, the Panthers vintage bubble coat. You guys know how I already stepped. You already know how I stepped. I got the Panthers bubble coat. You know what I'm saying? Vintage. Uh, Royal blue Panthers gear. You know what I'm saying? I already got to put it on. I got the hat to match. I got the bubble coat. It don't get too cold down here. And I don't go to enough games outdoors here to be able to wear this stuff. So I was like, this might be my only chance to wear this bubble coat. Um, so I'm, I, I may rock it. But I also had the vintage 90s coach. I had the black turtleneck, the nylon pullover. I had the shark hat. I was really feeling myself, man. I had two great options. So I ultimately came to the conclusion that, um, I, like I said, I, I may not get a chance. I get a chance to wear that, the turtleneck and, and, and the nylon pullover in Charlotte if I go to a home game. But I definitely need something with a hood on it. I, I, so I went with the navy blue puffer. Come to find out. It wasn't even that cold that during the game. I did not have, I brought gloves, I brought socks, I brought hand warmers. It wasn't cold. It was not cold. I know the puffer coat played a factor, but I was sweating. Yes, you can blame it on the alcohol, but I was sweating. Sweating. And <laughs> it just, I thought it was going to be freezing at night right there on Soldier Field. Soldier Field is on the water. I thought it was going to be freezing cold. I was fine. I was actually too warm. I probably could have worn the other outfit. Regardless, I got the, I got the outfit off. I got my videos. I got the footage. Um, it, it, it was cool. But it, it just, it, the wind is a difference maker, man. That wind do not play with anybody. It doesn't play fair, and it don't play nice. 
I'm gonna tell you that right now. Okay. Uh, one more thing. Where I'm at. I'm calling out Soldier Field. I'm calling out Soldier Field. I don't know. I, I, I don't know, man. Anything that's Soldier affiliated, I'm pissed off. Soldier Field may be is legendary. Shout out to it being legendary. I checked it off off my list. Another stadium, a uh, path of uh, NFL stadium, off my list. So I did that bucket list style. Cool, clap it up. Um, but it's just poorly designed and poorly laid out. It's probably outdated. I mean, it would be a travesty. Probably they probably burn the city down if they ever tried to build a new stadium instead of that one. So I get the sentimental value. But dog, let me tell you something. Uh, the logistics are trash. Logistics of that stadium are trash. Like, and I'm and I'm not gonna lie. I had this probably the best seats I've ever had in any NFL stadium, lower level. Uh, I'm almost halfway between the corner, halfway between uh, the 50 yard lines or probably 20, 25 yard lines where I was sitting on the sideline. So phenomenal seats. I mean, I could then I could then there's still the stat sheet um, and, and call plays for Frank Wright and Thomas Brown. That's how close I was. So it, it was cool. It was cool to do that. Um, but listen, and I was hungry. And I was thirsty. So I had to do what it do. Fine. But getting to the bathroom is the worst. And I understand that it's just inherently bad going to a public stall at any kind of stadium or public event. It's going to be bad. I understand that. This is not my first rodeo. But when I tell you in that lower level, this is some of the worst logistical layout that I've ever experienced. And shame on me for waiting till halftime. And I've seen some bad halftime bathroom lines. I frequented Mercedes-Benz Stadium. I've gone to BOA a couple times as well. Let me tell you this. That bathroom line was the worst bathroom line I've ever seen in bathroom line history. Like, it wasn't even a line. It was a mob. It was a mob with only like 10 stalls. It wasn't that many stalls. It wasn't that many uh, toilets. It wasn't that many pissers. It was bad, dog. I said, man, this. I had to go, and I had to go so bad. Like, shame on me for waiting. But I had to go so bad it wasn't even funny, man. Like literally my stomach was hurting. I had to, I had to, I had to urine so bad. Like I had to go. And I'm telling you, that panic that you get when you know you're nowhere near a bathroom or the destination that you need to go, I never want to experience that level of panic again. Ever in life. Cause I tried to go down to another section to find another one. It was easily five to six sections over easily. I probably was on the other side of the 50 yard. Like I said, I was on the sideline 2025. I was easily on the other side of the 50 and not just yardage. This was obviously, you know, stadium yardage. You loop around as long It's a bunch of people. It's halftime. I got there. No, no line, no order. It's just a mob. And I was at the point, bro. I had to make a tough decision as a man. I'm like, there's no bottle to pee in. This is too public to do that. The bathroom is way too full. I literally just forced myself through there. Forced myself through the mob, shoulder to shoulder, elbowing people. I had to do what I had to do. Finally got to it and emptied the tank. It was just bad, man. Like, this is something simple. Simple. The bathroom was horrible. Soldier Field is bad. I'm telling you. The layout is bad. They need to remodel or something. Put some porta potty somewhere in there. Something. It was bad. I, and I don't I'm sure if you were at the back of the line and you tried to wait like a responsible adult, you probably missed the whole third quarter. Probably missed the whole third quarter. So by the time you emptied the tank, it was too late to even put even more beer in the tank. <laughs> it, it was bad, yo. It was bad, man. And, and it wasn't even just that. After the game, trying to find the Uber, the Uber pickup area was horrible. It was blocked off. It was damn near impossible. And I understand it, it was easier. It was easy getting there. All the people at the hotel said Uber is tough. Uber is tough. I even thought about taking the train, but the train didn't stop that close to the hotel anyway. End up having to walk back. There's these horse drawn carriages that will that will take you to your car in the parking lot. Very walkable sidewalk with double lanes for bikes and stuff. So there was these horse drawn guys and bike riders taking people. Let me tell you why these bike riders. They, they, they tried to charge $80 to go a mile and some change. 
$80 to go a mile and some change. I wanted to throw my phone at him when he when he told me that price. Or pop an air in his tire. $80. It's just too much pride in me to do that. And I'm old. I got bad knees. I've had knee surgery. My feet hurt. I was tired. You know what I'm saying? My best years. Eh, I'm, on the, I'm on the other side of the best year. I got more better years behind me than I do in front of me physically. That's just age and father time. But I had too much pride to pay $80 for that. In Joe Biden's economy, nah, I'm not paying, I'm not paying $80. I'm not paying $80 in Joe Biden's economy for a, a bike ride um, for a mile and some change. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then when I was listening to him tell somebody else, he didn't tell them $80. He did not tell them $80. I know it. So I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Discriminatory, predatory pricing, whatever you want to call it. Did you know we weren't local? You saw me in my Panthers gear? Was it something else? Come on, man. I'm not paying $80. Too much pride. Too much pride. Too much pride. But yeah, I mean, I, I got beef with Soldier Field. I don't want anything to do with anything Soldier related. Soldier Boy. No Limit Soldiers. Soldier Slim. R.I.P. I, I, I'm over it. Toy Soldiers. Paper Soldiers. I'm over it. I got beef with anything soldier related right now. I mean, shout out to the troops and the vets. Ain't nothing to do with them. But Soldier Field has soured me on anything soldier related. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm mad. Tell me why I'm mad. But hey, you guys know I got to put the fresh stuff on. As you can see, I have this nice dope t-shirt. This is the Hall of Honor edition. It is a Julius Peppers shirt. This is from Mitchell and Ness. I will be linking it down in the description if you want to get your own. It was on back order. It was on back order. It took it a while. I wanted to have it for the game since Peppers played in Chicago and, and he played for the Panthers, of course. I wanted to have it then to wear underneath because it wasn't going to be the only thing I wore. It was going to be one of my layers that I was talking about. We didn't come in. Regardless, I love it. It's an old-fashioned vintage logo. It's got the old Carolina Panthers font at the top, hence why I'm wearing the old Carolina Panthers font on my hat. Um, and it's got a nice little picture of Peppers from Draft Day, um, autograph for Peppers, the Hall of Honor logo. Obviously, it says Peppers right here, 90, um, Peppers from Draft Day, and just some videos. It's, I mean, uh, it's dope. A very dope shirt. So if you are interested in this shirt, you can hit the link down below. It's a referral link. I will get a little bit of commission from you ordering this shirt. So help yourself out. Help me out a little bit. Put a little change in my pocket for putting you on. I appreciate that. And shout out to Mitchell and Ness. Um, it's not a sponsored video, but they should be. Holla at your boy. So let me tell you why I'm not mad, though. I'm not mad at the Chicago food scene. Like, obviously, what is Chicago known for if you're outside? Chicago deep dish pizza and Chicago dogs. Obviously, there's some other like beef sandwiches and beef dip and all that stuff. I'm not I'm not into that. I don't get down like that. I like sloppy food. Like I like a meatball sub with extra sauce. You know what I'm saying? I, I throw extra jelly on my biscuits for breakfast. You know what I'm saying? I like extra sauce and mayonnaise and mustard and stuff on my on my ham sandwiches and subs. I'm cool with that. But I'm not dipping a whole beef sandwich in soup or whatever it is for like a French dip. I'm not doing that. So I had to skip that. But Chicago deep dish pizza and Chicago dogs. Now, if you've never had a Chicago dog before, it's very interesting. Now, me personally, it, it, it took me a minute. I just got on Chicago dogs probably end of last year. Shout out to my guy, Ben Riley. He made some at the crib on the grill, dressed it up. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a very simple man when it comes to hot dogs. Ketchup, mustard. I, I'll fool with some chili. I'll fool with some chili. If you want to put a, a, some cheese on it, cool. A chili cheese dog, I'm cool. Onions, I can even tolerate onions. But all the ingredients of a Chicago dog is going to be a pickle. It's going to be uh, hot banana peppers. It's going to be tomatoes. It's going to be green relish and mustard. I'm going to tell you right now, all those ingredients by themselves, it probably make me throw up. If you put the ingredients of a Chicago dog on a hot dog by itself, I will probably throw it back at you. I'm will. Do not put that on the glizzy. I'm sorry. But when you combine the powers of all these separate things, they come together to make something so, so sweet. So, so sweet. The Chicago dog is beautiful. Beautiful. I went to, I got highly recommended by my sister. She frequented Chicago. Shout out to JoJo. Um, she 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 frequented there for work and stuff and stuff. She travels. Um, 
I went to Portillo's. Portillo's is a legendary restaurant. Um, apparently, they come at the building one in Atlanta. Shout out to Portillo's. I will be all over that thing because it's an it's a uh, Illinois based, Chicago based restaurant, and they kind of franchised out. Apparently, now they're they're hot dogs and is highly recommended. The line was stupid long. I went there, ordered me some food. I got a food review right now. Check it out. Day two. Cold again. I'm getting some football. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's definitely cold again. Nothing changed there. Colder, so that guess it was changed. But my next uh, Chicago meal checklist, going for them, the Chicago dogs. Now the pizza was a nine and a half. I'm expecting the dogs to impress me even more. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned for my food review. Another one. This may be my backup plan. This Panthers thing not going our way, so it may be on to the Keith Lee. Portillo's, Chicago dog, tenders, fries. I got it. I'm gonna try it. Let's get and rate that thing. Got a Chicago dog in Chicago. <laughs> like a steam, <laughs> like a steam wing, not a charred wing. Yeah. The peppers definitely have a lot more kick than any type of dog I've ever had. Chicago dog. And the damn steam, the boil, whatever they did. Got water rushing out of the goddamn bun. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to try the char, but take another bite, get some pickle on there. <laughs> My initial scale on the dog. I give it an eight out of 10. My only feedback is the char. Charter. <laughs> Charter the only way. I'm from the South where I like my hot dogs just a little bit burnt. Mm -hmm. tender, tender time with the ranch. Mm -hmm. The breading is seasoned good. Very crispy. It's a good tender. You know how raisin canes before? Uh -huh. <laughs> the season is good. I don't like how hard they fried it, but and they're not scratching my gums up, so it passes. I give it a seven. Seven out of ten. Just off the season in it and the herbs and spices in that down. Yes, I had to give it a solid rating, man. It was it was it was good. It was solid. Um the only thing that I didn't like, like I said, the, the bun uh got real soggy because they steamed and or boiled the hot dog. I like, I, like I said in the video, I'm from the South. I like a little bit of grill and char on my dogs. I, 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 I got to burn it a little bit. Burn it. Just burn it just a tad bit. Not too much. Not too much, but burn it just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm from the South. Mainly from the country. Like, burn it just a little bit. <laughs> it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but burn it just a little bit. Because that steam and all that, it made the, it made the hot dog bun it's too, too soggy. And it, it just, it kind of, it kind of set it off a little bit. But, uh yeah i hope y'all like my food review let me know down below in the comments if you ever had a chicago dog before because it's very interesting the combination of ingredients that i listed out so let me know down below if you've had one let me know what your thoughts are on, on it and let me know if you like the steamed or grilled hot dog if you like yours a little bit burnt like your boy because i, I look I may have to start doing more food reviews if I travel to these games because clearly this Panther stuff is getting real crazy. This franchise is trash right now, and I don't know what direction they're going, so I need a fallback plan. So maybe I can be uh, uh, a food reviewer on TikTok like Keith Lee and do that thing. Uh, the next thing I tried on the Chicago food scene, Chicago pizza. Chicago pizza. And that was day, actually day one. The first thing I did on game day was go get that deep dish. Got to go get that deep dish. I went to Giordano's, legendary Giordano's, been highly recommended as well. Uh, they had deep dish pizza. It, it's, I got the meats, and it takes 45 minutes 
for their deep dish pizzas because they make them all fresh. They make them all from scratch. I'm not mad at that. I'm not surprised at that. Um, but it was interesting going there because we saw a group of older guys that had on like these these shirts that say NFL roadies. They were all sitting together. And we thought they were referees at first. I couldn't see. I was like, oh, man, these are us for the night. I'm going to go talk trash to them. But come to find out, there's just a group of old retired guys that travel from city to city. They pick a trip every so often during the year, um, and they go to an away game. This year, Chicago on a Thursday was their deal. They were all going to dress up like Mike Dick with a sweater vest. But I was able to get a picture with them. Very cool group. When I retire, I want to be as cool as these dudes that can just travel, go to these games, eat food, have a good time. Uh, uh, that's goals, real goals, but they were really cool dudes, but on to the pizza. Um, I got the meats. I shared it. Only It was only six slices in that pizza. Cause it's so big. Um, and here's a review right here. Might go get my Keith Leon going to Giordano's. Get my first taste of authentic Chicago deep dish pizza. I'm doing real tourist type activity. So y'all stay tuned for my review. Um, I'm gonna give everything. Hopefully they don't come after me, my honesty. I got the pizza, the dish, I got it, let's try it. And rate it from one to ten, like Keith Lee. Chris Cross. And the first thing is Tom Tom. He from Hot Point. For real? Yeah. But he's gonna do up all that shit. This Bro. shit, kid. <laughs> what do you think? Cheese, oh, cheese, cheese, oh, cheese. cheese. So they put the sauce on the top, Chicago style. Yeah, they do. I'm about to say. That's that deep dish. That's like real deep dish. They, do, they got a, spot, a couple spots in the Morrisville like that. I got the meats on meats deep dish. Extra cheesy as you can see. A lot of toppings. 45 minute wait for the pizza slice. All deep dishes take 45 minutes. Fair. So I got an appetizer instead, but I approve. I'm giving it a 9.5 out of 10 because the crust is crispy at the bottom. But there's no sauce on top of it to keep it to keep it soggy. The sauce is on top. Appreciate it, Chicago. You don't owe me nothing. Hey man, you saw the cheese, man. The cheese, it felt like one of them Ninja Turtle people. You know the Ninja Turtles in the cartoon? The cheese to be all stringy. That's how exactly how it looked to me, man. I was like foaming at the mouth. And I can only eat one slice. I can only eat one slice, and I was fighting for my life to get through that. That stuff was so filling. It was so, so filling. Granted, we did have appetizers. We had some boneless chicken, uh, and we had some mozzarella uh, triangles. So that did knock the edge off because 45 minutes for a pizza just sounded way too long. You couple that with a couple beers while I was waiting, some Blue Moon pitchers, and I was a little bit full. I'm not going to lie, but uh, that pizza got the best of me. I can't even front. But I did. I did. I, I love it. I love. It. I don't know if they're gonna put a Giordano's here down in the south, but Giordano's. Salute to you guys. Um, look, like I said, I, you gotta try. You guys should try deep dish pizza, man. Say you did. I I do it again. I do it again to get that authentic style. Win in Rome. Do what Romans do. Uh, that's why I'm not mad. I had to tell you why I'm not mad because that food food turned out very very good shout out to chicago's food scene man they have food places everywhere downtown where i was staying um it was almost hard to pick so that's why i had to get some recommendation from the family so next statement let's talk about my game day experience at the game because i'm not gonna lie the way that game started out how it was i got there so so early i was good in i was good in buzz I, I, like I said, I was eating and drinking beers pretty early in the day. I was just an hour back. The game starts at 7.15. Um, so you got to get a little bit more of a head start. I was off work, so nothing to worry about there. Um, but I, I, it was just fun getting to the stadium early to explore. In the lower level section I was, I was able to get down on the sideline during pregame. It was so dope. Like I said, I was with JJ and Terrence from for Panthers fans only. Uh, shout out to my guys. But I also saw my boy Aaron Chase. 
season ticket holder for the Panthers. He traveled to Chicago. I had no idea, man. He pulled up on me. He had his mask on. We took a cool picture, man. Was talking and stuff. It was just cool being on that sideline, seeing NFL Network do their pregame stuff. Saw Smitty on the sideline. Got to talk and yell with the players. Um, saw a team photographer and stuff. Uh, it was just dope being able to be that close. And like I said, I've never been able to be on the wall, especially pregame. And the role stayed him at that and do that. Y'all know me. I like to talk. I got a loud voice when I'm at the games. I typically never have my voice. I lose my voice every time after a game. And getting the yell down from there was really amazing, man, especially that pregame experience. I can't let that be the last time I get those good of seats. But I will say these were the best seats I've ever had in my life. And the fact that the Panthers and the Bears are so trash, I had a phenomenal deal, a phenomenal deal on those tickets for a legendary stadium. I can't be mad at it. I can't be mad at it. Definitely, but like I said, saw Smitty, saw Luke Kuechly sneaking around in pregame as well, man. Really, really surreal moment. And like I said, I didn't realize it was cold. I did not realize it was cold um, because I guess I was so excited, but the weather was favorable down there. I don't know if we got less of a draft because we were kind of like right underneath the overhang in the section. Um, not quite a shadow, but it was covered if it rained down. Did not plan that. Didn't rain, so I didn't really need it, but it felt like a good spot. There was a bunch, a bunch of Bears fans, of course, but there was a good amount of Panthers fans sprinkled in. But I was a little bit disappointed in my fellow Panthers fans and keep pounding nation. Uh, they weren't getting hyped. They were not getting hyped. Me, JJ, Terrence, we were talking so much trash. So much trash to everybody. We were pointing, doing the, the Cam Newton first down point every time we did something, dapping each other up, looking for other Panthers fans in other sections that were getting hyped, pointing them out. It was just the ones in our section weren't doing anything. I don't know if they were scared or what, but the whole point of being an NFL fan and traveling on the road, yeah, you want to see your, your favorite players and stuff. But talking trash is half the battle. Come on, man. Talking trash is half the battle. So I was a little bit disappointed. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit let down. But it, it was the best season I ever had in my life. But the game, the way that the game went, man, the Panthers embarrassed me. I'm not going to lie. They embarrassed me in front of my friend. I always like to say they embarrassed me in front of company. Because, you know, when you're in front of company, you got to put your best behavior on your mom, your mama when you was young used to be like, hey, now when we get into this store or when so-and-so come over, don't be acting crazy. Don't be acting crazy. Or when you have a friend over, they don't want to embarrass you in front of your friends. So they, 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 they don't cut up. But then you got some of the mamas that don't play. You go to your friend house, they getting a whooping for not taking out the trash. Or or just because you come over spending night on a Sunday morning. Everybody going to church. You ain't staying home, sleeping in, having fun. You know, they're going to embarrass you in front of your friends. You might get a whooping. You might, you might, you ain't doing any chores. You might get jacked up. The belt may come out. Getting embarrassed in front of your friends. And so the, the Panthers, they do it. Every time we play on national television at primetime, they embarrass me in front of my friends. I'm so tired of it, man. I'm so tired of it. This is the second time in, I've gone to a game in person. And within the past year, I went to the Falcons game last year that we lost because of Eddie, that they embarrassed me. I, I put I put all my chips on the table, man. I'm not going to lie. That game broke me. That Bears game broke me. The least talented team on our schedule. I traveled to Chicago. I had a fun experience. I'm not going to lie. Regardless of the game, I had a fun experience. But they let me down. Everybody was watching. Every Nobody really watches on a week-to-week basis because we're so bad. So you want to put your best foot forward when everybody, all eyes are on you and they embarrass. It had a chance to be an epic game. Had we had that comeback, uh, uh, a two minute drive to kick that field goal to win another chance for them to be an epic win, just like the DJ Moore Hail Mary, but they fell short yet again, spent good money, the best seats. I had my freshest outfit on. I loved pregame. I loved the food. I wasn't really sick or hungover. I drunk properly and responsibly during the day. I drunk water. Everything was laid out perfect. Everything was good except the outcome of the game. Why, why, why do I keep doing this to myself? Why do we keep doing this to ourselves? You hate it. I hate it, man. <laughs> I, really, I really, really hate it. I really hate it, man. They embarrass us in front of the friends. 
I, it takes an emotional toll on you, man. And, and, and I hate that I'm so invested, but I am. I make content. I spend money on games traveling. I'm on the internet all day. I chop it up with you guys, socialize. It's cool. I love the team. Obviously, I spend money on gear. But the team don't, I don't feel like the team love me back. Sometimes I feel like the team does not love me back. It's a one-sided, abusive relationship. The past five years has been a one-sided, abusive relationship. And, and, and I hate it, man. I'm so, I can't, I can't, I can't see myself changing teams. From the Carolinas, I'm, I'm, like I said, all the money and resources I've invested in, you know what I'm saying? If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna change teams, I'm, I'm gonna do it the right way. I'm not gonna bandwagon for play. I don't need a reason to let you know why I'm a fan of this team. I'm, I'm gonna do it right. If I jump from one bandwagon to another, and I was talking to Terrence from FPFO about it, said if we're gonna jump bandwagons, I'm gonna do it the right way. I'm gonna be a Kansas City Chief fan. <laughs> If I'm going to jump teams and, and get questioned about my loyalty, I'm at least going to go to a team that's going to win a Super Bowl. I'm not half-stepping going to some screw-up team just to brag about struggle love and then seeing us on the other side. I'm not doing it. If I ever bandwagon, I'm going to the best team in the league, perennial contenders. Patrick Mahomes probably got another 10 years left in his career. Do bandwagon the right way if I do it. But I just can't see myself flipping on the Panthers no matter what. Like even if I have to make them take a back seat for my other favorite teams and other sports, or I start covering fantasy football, or I start doing fitness content or food reviews, I, I would do that probably before I switch teams. But if I do switch teams, I'm doing it right. <laughs> I'm doing it right. I'm doing it right. I'm just playing. But I am. No, I'm just, I'm just messing around. Hey, quick question real quick. Um, Do you like sports? Of course you do. You're watching this sports channel. Of course, it's unnecessary bluntness sports talk. But how about making money? Hmm? Eh, we all like making money. Bills got to get paid. But how about doing both at the same time? Sounds good. Well, I want to tell you about the partner I've been working with, Underdog Fantasy. It's the easiest way to get some action in sports and also make these games a little bit more interesting. Right now, um, they have their pick em option that they're doing, and I've been all over it for the NBA. So it's pretty straightforward. All you got to do is just pick higher or lower on your favorite or least favorite, I guess, player stats for the night, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. And one of my favorite parts about Underdog Fantasy is the pick em insurance because None of us are perfect. So this gives you a little extra wiggle room. So if one of your guys that you have on your slip misses, you still have a chance to collect some money because of that pick em insurance got your back. So here's what I want you to do. Go ahead and download the Underdog Fantasy app and use the code DUNKON100 to get 100% match on your first deposit for my gift to you. And we can bet along together. You can even follow me on Twitter where I post most of my underdog picks on a daily basis. We can all get paid together. And their mobile app is pretty slick and their website is pretty straightforward too. So you'll have no problem jumping right in and getting to the bread like me. Must be 18 years in order to play and be present in a state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms apply. Are you concerned with your play? Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit www.mcpgambling.org for help. So last segment is a matter of fact and not really a hard fact. Just I checked another stadium off my bucket list. I'm trying to eventually go to as many stadiums as possible just to see it. I've been to, I think, seven or eight. Let's count them out. Start NFC South, BOA, Atlanta. I don't want to count, though. I'll just count Atlanta as one. Um, Tampa. And then staying down in the region, um, I went to the Titan Stadium. I've been to uh, I've been to Indianapolis Stadium. That's five. I went to Chicago, just not Soldier Field off. L.A. Rams. Um, I went to their stadium. I went to Houston for a Texans game, NRG. So I've been to eight, eight stadiums, eight out of 32. I've been to 25% of NFL stadiums. Like I said, I'm not going to count Atlanta twice, but another one off my list. Um, I don't know how I would rank them, but I definitely say that I got to throw more shade at Soldier Field. I had to throw more shade at Soldier Field. It's a tie between Soldier Field and Tampa as, as the worst stadiums. I'm sorry. Tampa, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a road guy. That cannon, they had us sitting right in front of the cannon. We got blown out that game. I was pissed off about that cannon. And it was super hot, sitting directly into the sun. It was so hot. They were giving away free T-shirts to Tampa fans. I had to wrap that thing around my head like a, 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 <laughs> like a what's it called? Like a darn um, a job. Like, it was that bad for Shea. I needed it. And it was the middle of December. So, 
that, that's probably one of the worst. The best beautiful is probably LA. LA and Mercedes Benz were definitely dope staples. NRG was nice. NRG is nice, but um, I probably got to go LA. LA was amazing, man. So knock get something off my list, man. How many stadiums have you been to? Let me know if you ever been to any away games or what stadiums you've been to, even home games. I mean, obviously BOA is one of them, but I want to get you guys feedback about how many you went to. I'm trying to cross more off my list. When it'll be, I don't know. I guess I got to go to New Orleans eventually. Ugh. Ugh. To cover the whole division, so ugh. I got to go eventually. But I've been to, I've been to Atlanta more times than I could count, being down here and watching the Panthers play over the past, what, seven, eight years. So another one off my list. I need to get I need to start making like a collage or something or some kind of like um um kind of poster. That's a good idea. I put it on Etsy or something. People do those maps where they color what states or countries they've been to. I might have to do that for NFL stadiums. That'd be kind of cool. It's a free money making idea if you listen to this. You get a free one. If you beat me to it, good luck. Competition. Uh but Man, I just wanted to review the, the city, man. It was very beautiful. Traveling back was cool, man. Like, it wasn't bad. Um, traveling and getting there as far as Uber and stuff. Uber was very affordable, very walkable city. I got to get back to Chicago. I'm thinking I'm going to do one big away trip like that every season. Next year, maybe Germany. I'm looking at Germany. I'm trying to get on that waiting list for Germany um, with the Roaring Riot. So, I'll do that. Um, it was cool. I ran into some Roaring Riot people. Um, in Chicago as well. They didn't really have a, a, a big group there, but I saw a lot more Panthers fans and Ron Riot people there than I really expected. I was shocked. I was 100% shocked, especially with the status of the team. I'm sure everybody else had bought their tickets in advance like I did, so they were all the way in. They were going to make it a vacation regardless, so I, I was surprised to see how many Panthers fans were actually there. Good turnout. Like I said, the energy wasn't, as all, wasn't what I wanted it to be um, because they were a little bit quiet. And we had some big plays with Amir, and we were winning at times. We got some defensive stops. There was a lot of reasons to be excited, but nobody got excited during the game. Nobody got excited during the game. Regardless, I did love the food there. Um, I had a fun time. I played uh, darts at a place called Flight Club. It's like, uh, um, I guess, top golf for darts. You get your little bay, get the drink, you throw darts with your friends. They record the video. I'm great at darts. I'm going. There's one in here. Locally in Georgia, I'll probably be going to that one now just because I'm hooked. I may even get a dartboard for the room. Who knows? Um, I just found that I was good at it, and I was cooking. I was cooking out there, but I had a great time on the trip, man. Like I said, shout out to Aaron Chase popping up on your boy. Uh, shout out to um, my guys from FPFO. Y'all make sure y'all check them out. Um, Terrence and JJ, uh, real good dudes making uh, Panthers content and podcasts as well. Shout out to those guys. Um, we, we traveled together there. We had a phenomenal time there, man. Like, Chicago doesn't owe me anything. Uh, we'll be back um, to Chicago, maybe. We'll, be, we'll probably be doing another way trip next year at some point. So, uh, it was fun. It was it was really fun. Food was great. It was cool, man. It was cool. So, Chicago, I recommend. Uh, probably in the summertime, though. You heard me talking about the weather. And um, make sure you empty your bladder before you go to the game. That's my my traveling tips for going to Chicago. Those are free as well. I may even be a travel advisor in my backup plan. So personal uh, uh, fitness content, food reviews, and traveling advising. I, I need a backup plan because this Panther stuff, they're going to push me over the edge, man. The Panthers are going to push me over the edge. I'm going to have to pivot. I'm going to have to pivot. I need, I, need a, I need a plan B. I need a plan B. You guys let me know down below in the comments what my plan B should be. I know y'all see me put my workout videos that time on Twitter. Should I do fitness content, food reviews? You like my food reviews from this video? Let me know. All right. I'm going to holler at you guys. Make sure you are subscribed. I appreciate you listening to the Panther Banter Podcast. Um, I do have a trivia winner from um, last time. Um, shout out. You will be getting your address. Uh, I will be uh, asking for your address and putting a prize in the mail. So shout out to you for the audio listeners. We'll not be doing trivia this episode, but I will be doing more of these Panther Banter podcasts and getting back to it because I do need this long form content. My next one, I'm probably going to be giving my spill on the state of the Panthers franchise. I got a lot to say. I got a lot on my chest because um, like I said, they broke me. They broke me and embarrassed me. I'm against the Bears. So I got to get it off my chest. Without further ado, man, I'm signing off. I'll let y'all be safe. Peace.